Hey there fellow masters, after my last video about rum, I got several comments and requests regarding, you know, my still and the controller that I use. So I thought that I'd take a minute, a hot minute, to explain kind of briefly about the stuff that I use. Um, and again, if you find any of this stuff interesting or you want to know even more, leave a comment below and I'll try to address it in a future video. So to set the record straight, I did not build this. Uh, this is far too nice for me to have made. I got this from a company I believe called Mile High Distilling. They're out of Colorado and you go to where, their website and they've got all kinds of stuff like this. Uh, this is an eight gallon still and essentially what it is, it's a stainless steel milk crate that has a few modifications on it. There's a port here and a port here and you can do whatever you want with each port, I guess. Um, I have a thermometer in this port. Eventually, I'm going to put a thermocouple in there. And here, I have my heat source, which is the element to a hot water heater. The cap, I don't think, is modified at all. Uh, I think it's just a standard uh, sanitary pipe uh, flange adapter. And these guys, you can get, you know, from a company like McMaster Car, sells straight tubes, curved tubes, and this I think is two inch, has like a two and a half inch flange on it. And this would go on the top with, uh, this is a silicone seal, and they would go on there. And this is a standard sanitary pipe clamp. And it just goes on there, and if you saw the last video, you know, just screw it on there, and it clamps it on there. Um, this is the other kind of piece of custom equipment. This is the condensing part of the tower. Um, and you can see it actually has two condensers on it, one here and one here. Um, you can run this still two ways. One is a pot still, which is just using this long condenser, or as a reflux still, which utilizes both. And what happens there is the steam condenses here falls back down, re-evaporates, and then condenses again here, and that gives you a much higher proof. I usually use the reflux when I'm doing like vodka or something when I want a really, really high proof, like clear, you know, just no no flavor or nothing in the alcohol. Um, I suppose you could also do that for fuel alcohol too, uh, which is entirely what I use this for. Um, but these two things were kind of Custom, I had to buy um, these. You can get, like I said, at McMaster Car or whatever. Um, I have a thermocouple as well that I use to monitor the steam. Um, I got this from Automation Direct. All my electronics I got from Automation Direct. Uh, they're really affordable. They ship really fast and I'm pretty happy with everything. Software for all their stuff is free too, which is a bonus. Um, so speaking of that, let's get on to the controller. So here's the enclosure for the PLC. And uh, you'll have to excuse the camera angle and this bad picture in general. Uh, believe it or not, I don't have a good spot to film anything. So this is kind of the best I could conjure up with what I had. But I think we can still see what's kind of going on. Uh, right here is the main power switch, pretty self-explanatory. And I have a series of lights that will eventually do various things. Um, this is a green LED, which will indicate when the um, power supply is outputting 24 volts. This red LED will indicate whenever there is a fault with the PLC. And this one is um, an amber light which will light up any time that the relay is pulsing. So it'll blink quite constantly when it first starts up and then as everything gets to temperature, it will just kind of just blink every, you know, couple of seconds. These um, indicator lights, um, my idea is that once I have everything all figured out, each light will indicate the stage or roughly the stage of alcohol that I'm in. So you know, uh, heads, hearts, tails, that kind of thing. So red would indicate the four shots and heads. 
the green would indicate the hearts, and then amber would indicate uh, that the tails had started. Um, this is a nothing. This is just a nameplate that I 3D printed, and it just says uh, Wien et Wiedemest, which is very bad Latin for life is wine. That's what I call what I do around here. That's the brand name, if you will. Um, it's very bad Latin, so if anyone are Latin scholars out there, don't bother leaving a comment below. I already know, um, and I'm not changing it. Um, and this is eventually going to be what I control everything with. Um, right now I'm using a laptop, which I'll show you. But this is an HMI human machine interface, and it has a series of buttons here. And that's how eventually I will uh, end up controlling everything. So uh, let me set up the next shot, and I'll show you the inside. Okay, so let's open this guy up and see what we got. As you can see here, I made virtually no effort in wire management. As a matter of fact, probably you could hear the voice of a thousand electricians crying out at once. Um, but it's, it works. It, it's safe. Um, I've got the terminal blocks down here. Here's the PLC and all its gizmos. And on this side, you can see where all the LEDs, the power switch is all hooked up. And uh, let me set up for the next shot, and I'll explain everything that's inside. Right here is our power supply. And it just takes, you know, your power coming right out of your wall. In our case, like 110. Uh, it can take up to 240. So if you're in Europe or whatever, you can use the same power supply. It outputs 15 volt amps, which is not a whole lot, but it doesn't really matter because we don't need a whole lot. We're using this mostly for sending and receiving signals, so that's not really an issue at this point. Now, what is the point of the power supply? Well, this is going to convert our AC you know, 110 to DC 24 volts, which is going to power all of these other modules. Once it's converted to DC, that DC voltage goes to the circuit breaker. And from the circuit breaker, it goes to the actual PLC. This is the main modules, the PLC itself. This is the meat and potatoes of it all. And I have um, three sort of other modules. These are two output modules. So this has eight inputs, six outputs. So I've just extended it by another what, 12 outputs that I could potentially use. And this is an input module specific for thermocouples. So i um, explain all that in just a minute. So the first module that we have here is the thermocouple input. And right now I'm using just the one thermocouple that's monitoring the temperature of the steam coming up to the stack. And I don't think you really need a specific thermocouple module. You could just get a normal um, analog input module uh, but what was neat about this one is that you you connect your wires the software automatically recognizes what type of wire you're using so in my case I think I'm using uh, type J thermocouple it automatically knows it set all the parameters up I didn't have to do anything with the uh, normal analog you'd probably have to do some fine-tuning to get it just right so here's our other output module um, this one's setting the signal to the relay to go to the heater so this other output module that's powering all the leds and the lights on the front of the box this here is the relay that the aforementioned uh, output module is sending a signal to anytime it has to send power to the heater it can handle up to 480 volts it takes 3 to 32 volts DC to activate the switch and I'm just using you know 110 you know line voltage and it's going to that heater now this has a maximum capacity of um, 10 amps which nothing that I have on here cares about that so in the future I will put a 10 amp fuse in line with the heater um, so that if anything goes awry that fuse will break and nothing's going to heat up you know melt this relay 
or you know cause a fire or anything else that's horrible and up here i was going to make my own voltage regulator to supply five volts for all of the leds that i'm using but i had a bunch of five volt power supplies and rather than reinvent the wheel i just figured i'd rip one of those apart and uh, use that instead so i just soldered my stuff on there and it was pretty easy and you know that's kind of my philosophy if you don't have to reinvent the wheel you don't have to you know then don't just use whatever you got lying around Okay, so I've got this plugged in, and I'll turn this on. LED indicator that it's on, and we can we can see better that way. I'm not sure. You can see all the lights kind of dancing. You can see here, this uh, Y1 output is blinking, and that's corresponding with the relay. Uh, it's blinking. It knows that the temperature is not correct, and it is trying to rectify that. Now I don't have anything plugged in on the other side. So even though this is blinking, the switch is opening up. There's no load on the other side, so there's no risk of anything going wrong. Um, this thing's not gonna melt down. Um, let me show you uh, at the moment how I'm controlling this. Okay, so what we see here is some of the ladder logic that I wrote for this. Um, right now, the last time I used it, I had it set for 186 degrees. Um, and it's trying to reach that temperature right now. It never will because it can't, but uh, even so, that's what it remembers. That's what it's trying to do. Um, but this doesn't actually control how it knows when to turn off and when to turn on. It just sets, you know, the temperature and then the rest of the ladder logic really just um, is for the indicator lights. Let me show you um, the PID portion. So this is um, the PID, uh, and I won't get into what that is, but essentially what it will do is it, it takes a value that I've given it, and it tries to reach another value in which I set, you know, in the parameters. And you can see kind of like this graph, it's uh, trying to reach a temperature, or this is where it wants to be, rather, and uh, it will try to get there, and as we already said, uh, it won't but uh, right now this is how I control everything and um, I'm trying to get my HMI to work properly um, I've been having some hiccups uh, with some of the control bits but that's neither here nor there eventually I'll get it to work and I won't have to use this laptop at all that's the main goal I want to hang that thing on the wall and not have to worry about cracking open the laptop or this and that and the other thing the HMI will give me all the data that I need um, but uh, that's it in a nutshell. This is just something I tinker on all the time, all the time. It's unbelievable. It's like, you know, a plumber's house always leaks. My PLC is never done. Um, just something I always tinker on. I always think of something different to put into it. The ladder logic's always changing. You know, it's fun. It's fun for me. So hopefully you found this interesting. Um, I kind of rambled on. This was kind of spur of the moment. I unscripted. Not that I write a script for anything anyway, but, uh, Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying what you see on the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon for any notifications from future videos. See you on the next one.